Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on liver abscess, also known as hepatic abscess. So, liver abscess is when there is a pus filled area in the liver which is secondary to other sources of bacterial sepsis. There are a few types which include pyogenic, amoebic, and fungal type. Pyogenic is the most commonly seen liver abscess and it is often microbial. Amoebic is due to Entamoeba histolytica, whereas fungal type is due to Candida species. Those people who are at a higher risk of having liver abscess are elderly patients, those with diabetes mellitus, immunocompromise, such as having HIV, liver transplant, or if they have underlying hepatobiliary pancreatic disease. The roots of infection can be from direct spread of bacteria from the biliary system infections, such as ascending cholangitis or empyema of the gallbladder in cases of inflammation of gallbladder. And this direct spread is the most commonly seen route, which accounts for around 60% out of all the cases. Other sources can be intra-abdominal source through spread from the portal vein, which drains from acute appendicitis, diverticulitis or inflammatory bowel diseases, pancreatitis and even pelvic abscess. External inoculation, such as radiofrequency ablation or traumatic processes, or hematogenous spread in sepsis. Spread through blood, for example, in cases of infective endocarditis. So the bacteria can travel to the liver and causing liver abscess as well. The patient may present with symptoms such as spiking fever together with chills, and this is noticed in 90% of all the cases. They can also have abdominal pain, especially at the right hypochondrium, due to capsular stretch of the liver. Jaundice and hepatomegaly are often seen as well, and other non-specific symptoms such as anorexia, signs of anemia, symptoms of anemia such as palpitation or fatigue, loss of weight, pain radiation to the shoulder, diaphoresis where there is excessive sweating can occur as well. So investigations, we start off with the blood and urine investigations. On full blood count, look for leukocytosis, where there is increase in the white blood cell count. ESR and CRP, and notice the trend of the values to monitor for the response towards treatment as well. Liver function test, the liver enzymes level will be deranged, and it also shows the severity of the case. Renal profile to check the urea and creatinine level, assess the hydration status, and also assess the suitability of the patient for a contrast CT scan. Blood or pulse culture to look for the specific organism for targeted antibiotic therapy. Tumor markers, this is to rule out cancer, and also urine, full examination, and microscopic examination to look for pyuria. Whereas for imaging, we can do chest x-ray, erect chest x-ray, anterior and posterior, anterior posterior view. This can be done to look for any elevation of the right hemidiaphragm, any infiltration at the right lung base, and any right-sided pleural effusion, all at the right side where it is near to the liver. Ultrasound of the hepatobiliary system to exclude liver tumor, and CT scan to exclude liver tumor as well. The diagnostic investigation would be aspiration of the pus for culture and sensitivity to determine what is the causative organism. Other tests such as amoebic serology or PCR stool ova cysts and parasites can be done if suspicious for amoebic abscess. For example, if the patient has recently traveled to an endemic area in the past six months, then if necessary, Close monitoring of the vital signs and strict input-output charting. Watch out for complications such as Klebsiella and Dophthalmitis. This is seen especially in patients who have diabetes and also infected with Klebsiella pneumonia induced pyogenic liver abscess. If they are complaining of ocular symptoms such as blurring of vision, then we will need to refer them to the eye specialist. Antibiotics via PICC, which is peripherally inserted central catheter. This can be given for those abscess which are less than 3 cm. And empirical antibiotics such as IV ceftriaxone or metronidazole, metronidazole can be given first. And then when the blood culture and sensitivity results return, then we can change to definitive antibiotics.
depending on what the causative organism is. So antibiotics, the total duration we give around 4 to 6 weeks. And antibiotics is given for abscess less than 3 cm. If more than 3 cm, then it will require drainage, which can be done through open surgery, laparoscopic drainage, or percutaneous drainage. So the indications for the open drainage would be if there is another pathology requiring surgery, such as ghost dons, or if there are multiple abscess, if the patient is immunocompromised, or if already done the percutaneous drainage, but then it failed, where the patient did not get better or the tube is become blocked, then we will need open drainage. And also another indication is if the abscess has ruptured already, then this will need open drainage as well. So that is all for this video. Thank you.